When I started this ministry 14 years ago, I said, Lord, I'm not going to copyright my stuff. My name is Kent Hovind. I taught high school science for 15 years, and now for the last 14 years, I've been an evangelist doing seminars on creation, evolution, and dinosaurs. People say, do you really have a Ph.D.? Boy, I get, you'd be amazed how many folks in debates say, oh, you don't have a real Ph.D. Well, I think you have the right to face your accusers, obviously. If somebody's saying, I don't have a Ph.D., then I want you to, you know, come face me face to face, and let's talk about it, okay? Give me a chance to defend myself. Ironically, when Hoven did face his accusers, they put him in jail for 10 years for being a fraudster. Fortunately for us, Hoven was prolific in producing videos that show exactly how scientifically qualified he is. For example, if you took one chromosome from every individual on the planet, and this chromosome, each chromosome contains the blueprint, the instructions for how to build the entire person. No, it doesn't. So, Hoven's scientific education doesn't extend as far as knowing the difference between a genome and a chromosome. Chromosomes are large DNA structures that constitute a fragment of the genome. For instance, in humans there are 23 chromosome pairs in the genome. One chromosome does not constitute enough information to create an entire human being. At this point, someone who doesn't know exactly how ignorant Hovind is will be saying, Hey, wait, this man claims to have taught high school science for 15 years. Maybe he just misspoke. Unfortunately, Hovind continues. And this chromosome, each chromosome contains the blueprint, the instructions for how to build the entire person. So if you had one chromosome from each person on the planet, Theoretically, you could make every person again. You have the information to make a new Becky, or a new Steve, or a new Eric, or whoever, okay, from one chromosome. Now, to make it even more interesting, if we had our ladder from here to Chicago, and we twisted it, and twisted it, and twisted it, and as you, like you do a rubber band, you get it tighter and tighter, and pretty soon it starts to double knot, you know, it's, it starts to loop again, okay, similar idea. We're going to take this long ladder from here to Chicago and split it all the way down the middle. Each one of the rungs of the ladder is going to be cut in half, all the way from here to Chicago, while it's twisted. It is going to unwind from the other half, so we have two half ladders. That's going to join up with the other half ladder from your husband or wife, wind itself back together from here to Chicago, and make a child. You're a moron. I've never seen anyone garble biochemistry so badly. Reproduction goes something like this. Mommy splits up some of her cells so that they contain half the number of chromosomes, each one being a DNA double helix, in a process called meiosis. Daddy does the same thing. Mommy and Daddy then hook up, and they baby. Definitely. And in a desperate attempt to make God cry, fling DNA at each other. The two half cells, or gametes, combine to give a new full cell called a zygote. This is the baby. Note, at no point did you actually split open the individual DNA helixes, as Hovind describes, one from mommy and one from daddy, and try and stick them together. Indeed, this is impossible. DNA is complementary. If I take a sequence of mommy's DNA and try to stick it together with the string from daddy's DNA, it will never fit. Indeed, mommy and daddy can throw DNA at each other in perpetuity to no reproductive effect. DNA never unravels to two single strands as Hovind describes. And even if it did, the only person who holds a complementary strand of DNA would be a clone of yourself. As Hoban's explanation is so mangled and detached from any biological understanding, it's difficult to even see the vague principles which he is attempting to describe. Possibly Hoban is confusing DNA reproduction in cell division, mitosis, and reproduction. But ultimately there is no biological process whatsoever that involves the DNA double helices unraveling completely to two single strands. However, cell reproduction and fertilization are taught in all high school science classes. 
the cute irony being that Hovind had no problem in teaching 15 years of high school science when he would have certainly failed the biological class he himself was supposedly teaching. Each half of the rung is a genetic trait. Maybe the dad supplies the half of the rung for blonde hair and the wife supplies the half of the rung for brown hair. Okay, Hovind doesn't understand the difference between a base pair and a gene either. Base pairs are the complementary aromatic groups in the center of the double helix. Zoom out to the double helix and a sequence of the DNA helix that is tied to a biological function is called a gene. DNA has four base pairs. What they've done is they've taken each of these genes and they could get a whole cluster of molecules and call it a base pair, like they give it a letter A. I know all of those words and what they mean, but what Hovind is saying is complete and utter scientific nonsense. In order to make sense of Hovind's sentence, it is required that you make the assumption that Hovind doesn't understand the difference between atoms, molecules, base pairs, and genes. Add to this Hovind's earlier lack of knowledge of genes, base pairs, chromosomes, and genomes, and one is left with a deep and perplexing question of what exactly did Hovind teach in science class for 15 years. For the record, base pairs are the complementary aromatic groups in the center of the double helix. Zoom out to the double helix and a sequence of the DNA helix that is tied to a biological activity is called a gene. Now compare this to Hovind's biological understanding. DNA has four base pairs. What they've done is they've taken each of these genes and they could get a whole cluster of molecules and call it a base pair, like they give it a letter A. Dr. Hovind has his doctorate in education. He's great at explaining scientific principles. He taught science for 15 years and is an expert on this subject. People say, do you really have a PhD? Boy, I get, you'd be amazed how many folks in debates say, oh, you don't have a real PhD.